Deep within the heart of Tanzania, nestled amongst baobab trees and vibrant flowers, lived a young woman named Amina. Amina possessed eyes that sparkled like morning dew, a smile that could melt glaciers, and skin the color of rich, dark chocolate. But Amina harbored a secret, her ears were as large as elephant fans. Everywhere Amina went, whispers followed. Children giggled behind their hands, women clucked their tongues, and even her own parents, Mama Anika and Baba Jomo, called her Den Tuhi, meaning big ears, in hushed tones. Amina felt a gnawing shame, constantly hiding her ears under scarves and braids. One sweltering afternoon, while wandering through the savanna, Amina stumbled upon a hidden clearing. In the center, bathed in dappled sunlight, sat an old woman with eyes like pools of ancient wisdom. A bubbling pot, filled with a vibrant concoction that sent out an alluring sweet scent, stood beside her. Amina, drawn by the fragrance and the woman's serene presence, approached hesitantly. Lost, child, the woman inquired with a gentle smile, her voice like the rustling of leaves in a soft breeze. Amina, tears welling up in her eyes, confided her secret. The woman chuckled, a sound like wind chimes dancing in the air. Big ears, child, are not a curse. They are a gift, a window to a world unseen by most. Amina scoffed. A gift? They make me a laughing stock. The woman smiled knowingly. Listen closely, child. Your ears are like magic seashells. They can hear things no one else can, whispers of the wind, secrets of the animals, even the stories whispered by the stars themselves. Amina's eyes widened in disbelief. Really? The woman winked. Close your eyes and listen. Amina closed her eyes, focusing on the vast silence she thought surrounded her. But then, a symphony of sounds filled her ears. The rustle of leaves as a gentle breeze danced through the savannah, the chirping of unseen birds hidden amongst the vibrant foliage, and a faint hum that seemed to emanate from the very earth itself. The woman opened a vial, revealing shimmering dust motes that danced in the sunlight. This, she whispered, will help you understand what you hear. The next few days were a whirlwind of discovery for Amina. She eavesdropped on the gossip exchanged in the bustling marketplace, learning of a planned elopement between a young couple. Using her newfound ability, she anonymously warned the families, ensuring a smooth and joyous celebration. She heard the worries of the farmers about the coming drought, their concern etched in the anxious tremor of their voices. Amina, remembering the woman's teachings, listened intently to the whispers of the wind, learning of a distant river hidden by dense foliage. Leading the farmers to the life-giving water source, she saved their crops and brought relief to their worried faces. One sun-drenched morning, a wave of panic washed over Amina as she strained her ears. A low rumble, unlike anything she'd ever heard before, vibrated through the earth, sending shivers down her spine. Remembering the woman's words, Amina rushed to the village elder, a wizened man with a face etched with the wisdom of years. There's danger coming from the north, she gasped, a loud rumble that sounds like an angry beast. The elder scoffed, his voice laced with disbelief. Big ears hear foolish things, child. But Amina persisted, her voice trembling with urgency. Detailing the low rumble and the tremors in the ground, she painted a picture of a terrifying force approaching their peaceful village. Finally, the elder, worried by her conviction and the tremor in her voice, sent scouts north. They returned hours later, eyes wide with fear. A herd of angry elephants, disturbed by reckless hunters who had ventured too close to their watering hole, was stampeding towards the village. Amina, her fear replaced with a steely resolve, sprang into action. Using what she'd learned from the whispers of the animals, she devised a plan. She organized the villagers, young and old, and instructed them to play calming music on drums and flutes. Mimicking the soothing sounds of the elephants' peaceful calls, they created a symphony that echoed across the savannah. The elephants, confused but soothed by the familiar sounds, veered off course, sparing the village from their destructive path. From that day on, Amina wasn't Den Tuhi anymore. 
She was Amina, the woman with the magical ears, the one who saved the village. People came to her from miles around, seeking her advice and her unique ability to understand the whispers of the world. Amina learned that true beauty wasn't just about outward appearance, but about. But about the strength within, the kindness of your heart, and the power to listen. Her parents, Mama Anika and Baba Jomo, were filled with remorse for their taunts. They apologized with tears in their eyes, and Amina, with a forgiving heart, embraced them. They, along with the whole village, learned a valuable lesson, true beauty lies in the gifts we possess, not the flaws we perceive. Amina's fame spread beyond the village. One day, a messenger arrived on a swift camel, bearing a request from the Sultan himself. The Sultan's prized stallion, a magnificent creature named Sahari, had gone missing. Search parties had scoured the vast plains in vain. The Sultan, desperate, had heard of Amina's extraordinary abilities and summoned her to his opulent palace. Amina, accompanied by her parents, who were now her biggest supporters, embarked on the journey. Reaching the Grand Palace, adorned with shimmering gold and vibrant tapestries, Amina felt a pang of nervousness. But remembering the woman from the clearing and the power of her ears, she straightened her back and marched into the Sultan's court. The Sultan, a man adorned in jewels and silk robes, eyed Amina with skepticism. You, with your, oversized appendages, he drawled, eyeing her ears, claim you can find my horse. Amina bowed respectfully. Your Majesty, my ears are not a weakness, but a gift. Allow me to listen. The Sultan, despite his reservations, agreed. Amina stood amidst the hushed silence of the court, closing her eyes and focusing all her senses. The cacophony of sound she'd grown accustomed to faded away. This time, she strained to hear something specific, the faint whinny of a horse, the sound of hooves on distant ground. It was faint, barely a whisper, but Amina honed in on it. I hear him, your majesty, she announced, her voice ringing with newfound confidence. He's northwest, near the abandoned copper mines. He seems scared and injured. The sultan, intrigued, dispatched a group of his finest guards, following Amina's precise directions. Hours crept by, and a tense silence filled the court. Just as doubt began to cloud the sultan's face, a triumphant cry echoed through the palace halls. The guards had returned, leading a limping Zahari, his magnificent coat dusty and matted. The sultan's face broke into a wide grin. You are a marvel, Amina, he exclaimed, showering her with praise. He bestowed upon her a shimmering necklace, a token of his gratitude, and declared her an honorary member of his court. Word of Amina's feet traveled far and wide. She became known as the Whisperer of the Savannah, a respected figure who could bridge the gap between humans and the natural world. Amina, once ostracized for her difference, now embraced her unique ability. She used her exceptional hearing to solve mysteries, mediate disputes between villages, and even warn of impending natural disasters. She taught others to listen not just with their ears, but with their hearts, to understand the language of the wind, the whispers of the animals, and the silent pleas of those in need. Years later, a young girl named Zahara, known for her excessively curious nature, wandered into the market. Unlike others, Zahara didn't mock Amina. Instead, her eyes sparkled with fascination as she gazed at Amina's large ears. Can you hear what the birds are singing about? Sahara asked, tilting her head in innocent wonder. Amina smiled warmly. Of course, child. They say there's a hidden waterfall nearby, filled with sparkling water and colorful butterflies. Sahara's eyes widened with delight. Can we find it? Amina chuckled. Follow me, little whisperer. Hand in hand, the woman with the magical ears and the curious child ventured out into the savannah, ready to unlock another hidden secret, proving that true beauty lies in the power to listen and the courage to be different.